This one is my favorite, multimodal learning. Learning uh, comes in different shapes. You don't only learn if you sit down and uh, read text from a dry textbook. Uh, learning comes from interacting with your friends, uh, attending lectures and talking to your professors or uh, your teachers, right? Learning comes from solving problems in a group. Uh, and this is the, I believe it's the most powerful learning because uh, you are learning by interacting with other people and thinking about the problem from different perspective, from another human's perspective, a way that you would never figure out on your own. So that's very beneficial. But that being said, this is very beneficial, but it's not something you can create out of nowhere. Like it needs planning, right? Like um, you have to plan for the lecture or you have to go to the lecture or you have to plan a learning or a studying session with your friends. Um, and uh, But with AI, things are different. AI can offer you that assistant, that tutor that is there all the time. And why I like this is because you can feed AI the project or the material that you like to learn and you can use speech uh, to talk to the AI and especially uh, ChatGPT, they offer this. I will show you how and learn the material. And it's something I use a lot. Like I, I don't only use it in my learning. I use it even when I'm cooking. I'm, when I'm cooking, I just like open the voice mode on ChatGPT and I start talking to ChatGPT, the paid version, you need the paid version. And I start talking, I say like, hey, in my fridge, I have X, Y, and Z. Come up with a recipe for me to cook. And it's very, very helpful. And it's very fun, like even when I'm cooking, in the middle of cooking, it was like, okay, so I used the, I, I chopped the onion, I chopped the, let's say the, uh, or whatever, the tomatoes, and I added some oil, what should I do next? For how long should I cook this? And the AI is there to answer questions, but going back uh, to learning, not cooking. Uh, so you can use AI to have your own tutor uh, and it's available anytime. And you can feed it the data that you want and you can ask it to teach you that data. And the best thing about it is you can summarize things in your own words and then make sure or ask AI to make sure that your understanding is correct. Although this way has its limitations, but it's very beneficial because you can still teach or tell AI what is the data that you want to learn or what 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 is the data? Yes, what's the data that you want to learn? Okay, so without further ado, let's jump and let me show you how. All right, when, when it comes making content interactive, I believe large language models, like they do great. And there are even free versions of different large language models that you can use to uh, teach yourself different topics. And since I'm in medicine and my background is in medicine and healthcare, I'm gonna choose topic related to medicine, but you can choose any topic, you can choose anything. And one of the things that you wanna pay attention to is, let's say you wanna take this article and you wanna interact with large language model to learn it, you have to pay attention to the uh, token size. What is the token? Tokens are like a breakdown of the characters and the words, uh, and there are some limited number of tokens that large language models can take. Uh, Gemini by Google can take lots of tokens, and ChatGPT can take, I believe, around 32, or GPT-4 by OpenAI can take around 32,000 tokens. And that's still lots of information. So let's say I want to learn about the heart physiology, like here, and um, I want to just copy paste this article and I want to go to ChatGPT or um, Google Gemini and I'll show you how interactive way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. Okay, so let's say I'm going to copy this article. And if I want to make sure that the number of, well, tokens is like appropriate, you can go to uh, LLMTokenCounter.com, straightforward, and you can paste it. So actually it's 2,575 tokens. And as I said, GPT-4. Um, can take 32,000 tokens. Uh, so you can use this just to make sure that you are not beyond those 32,000 tokens, but still, like, this is uh, lots of word and characters. Uh, there are two versions. I'm going to show you one, or there are two ways of doing this. One, it's free uh, with uh, Google Gemini, and one is paid with ChatGPT or GPT-4. So let's say I copy-paste this data that I want to learn, and I will go to GPT-4, and... I will put this prompt first. Act like a tutor and ask me questions from this topic to help me understand it and memorize it. Uh, don't move on to the next topic until I summarize it or I summarize the answer of your question in my own words. During our conversation, you can use metaphors to explain things. And I believe in metaphors. Metaphors are very, very important to help you learn things. Metaphors are ways to simplify your understanding of difficult concepts. And it's very important 
um, for example, you might not be able to understand a simple or a complex concept in biochemistry, but if I give you a similar example in real life, uh, similar to that concept, you will be able to memorize it more. So let's try this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to paste the text that I want, and uh, it's here after this prompt, okay? And uh, so let's give it this to GPT-4. Now it's going to go and talk to you about questions, that, but the most important thing is the interactive part and the multimodal or the multimodal part. And that's why I love the voice mode. And that's where the large language models really excel in the voice mode. Okay, so let's use now the voice mode. That's okay. Let me rephrase the question. What triggers the cardiac cycle and how does it set the heart chambers into motion? Uh, I think the cardiac cycle is triggered by the SA node that is located in the atrium and that um, trigger the muscles to contract. Is that right? Exactly right. The SA node, also called the sinoatrial node, acts as the heart's natural pacemaker. It generates electrical impulses that spread through the atria, causing them to contract. This sets the cardiac cycle in motion by pushing blood into the ventricle. Great job. Next question. Why is there a slight delay at the AV node? And why is this delay important? Uh, before going to the next question, I want to uh, understand the SA node better. Can you give me a metaphor? Sure. Think of the SA node as the conductor of an orchestra. Just like the conductor sets the tempo and signals when each section of the orchestra should start playing, the SA node sets the rhythm for the heart and tells the atria when to contract. Without the conductor, the orchestra would play out of sync, just like the heart would lose its coordinated rhythm without the SA node. Does that help? Yeah, it does. So as you saw, it did a good job, and that's why I love the voice uh, chat. I use it when I'm driving, so you can use the same thing when you are driving uh, in the car, and you don't have to even touch your phone. It will talk to you and will talk through the, uh, the data that you gave it, and it will ask you one question at a time and make sure you understand it and we rephrase it. And, and it, it, it is a really great tool. It really changed the way I learned. But let's say you don't have access to ChatGPT or you don't want to buy the paid version. You can easily go to um, aistudio.google.com and you can go to stream real time. Um, this is not available to your app, but I think you can use their app. Uh, you can download the Gemini app and it can also have a voice model that can talk to you. I haven't tried it. So let's try the, next, the same thing. So what I would do is I will take the prompt. Um, okay, so I'm just going to copy paste and I will put in the system instructions. So whatever I paste here, it's just like it's going to understand. It's going to act like a tutor. And then I'm going to take the data and I'm just going to scroll down. So let's take this data and I'm going to control C, control V, and I'm just going to type it here and I'm just going to hit enter or sent, I think I should click on the microphone so it starts recording. All right, so the cardiac cycle, it, it, it's the heart rhythm, it's what makes the heart beat. That's a good start. It's definitely the rhythm of the heart. Can you elaborate on what that rhythm actually consists of? What physical changes are happening in the heart during each cycle? Think of it like a dance. What are the steps? I think the atria will contract and the ventricles, that then the ventricles are going to contract and there is some delay between the atria and the ventricles. Okay, you're on the right track. It's like a dance with two main steps. To be more precise, can you explain the two main phases of the cardiac cycle, which are called systole and diastole? What happens in each of these phases? I think in systole, the ventricles contract and pump blood to the aorta and in diastole, the ventricles dilate and relax and they take bloods from the atrium. Good, you've got the basic idea. Systole is like the heart So as you can see, it, it does really good job and actually there is no delay when compared to GPT-4. All right, uh, now I wanna show you how you can use ChatGPT or Gemini, whichever you prefer, uh, on your phone, but I'm gonna use my iPad to demonstrate because I will have a better and bigger screen. Um, for the purpose of demonstration. So we're just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy and paste the context here. So let me share the screen of my iPad here just a sec. So now, as you can see, I'm in the ChatGPT and I'm in the base version. I'm using ChatGPT 
and I'm just gonna paste the context here. Okay, so I'm just gonna paste it. So it's paste, I just copied it from my MacBook, and in the beginning, I'm just gonna say like, uh, uh, read this and wait for my instructions, colon. So now it's gonna read the content and it's gonna wait for my instructions. And then once it's done, I'm just gonna click on the voice mode, which is like located next to the microphone. And so I'm just gonna to click to it and talk to it. So a couple of things I noticed between the difference between ChatGPT and uh, Gemini. Uh, GPT-4 usually adapts to the personality or the persona you ask it. So let's say if you are uh, trying to learn something about healthcare, which is my field, uh, GPT tailor uh, the questions uh, to you as a physician. But that being said, Gemini still ask the question like, or tell you the information like you are a someone from the public or not a physician. Uh, but so it tailors the questions and the answers to the general public, to the general knowledge. It does not do a good job in tailoring things to healthcare. That's what I noticed. I don't know if it's something different if it is different in engineering. And I think because Gemini has more restrictions when compared to ChatGPT. But that being said, the advanced voice mode in ChatGPT is a bit slower when you add data versus Gemini, they use real-time API and it's faster. But I still prefer GPT-4. Okay, so let me show you how. Okay, so we added that and let me click on the talk. Okay. So I'm a medical student or I'm a physician. I'm trying to learn this content. Please ask me one question at a time without letting me without telling me the answer and uh, the, the idea of this I want to understand and learn the concepts in this article that I gave you so please go ahead so there is some delay all right let's start what is the primary event that initiates the pressure changes in the cardiac cycle uh, I think maybe the SA node fires and it leads to contraction of the atrium and then ventricles That's correct. The SA node firing initiates the electrical conduction, leading to atrial contraction. This sets off the sequential pressure changes throughout the cardiac cycle. Ready for the next question? Yeah, sure. Uh, what's, the next, what's the next question? What is the significance of the lag between electrical conduction, as seen on the ECG, and the actual contraction of the myocardium? Um, I don't know. So there is lag time as you see. That's okay. The lag exists because the electrical depolarization initiates the process, but it takes time for calcium ions to enter the myocytes and for the contraction machinery to activate. This delay ensures that electrical and mechanical events are coordinated. So as you can see, you can use it to talk to the data and uh, literally understand the data in a conversational way, which is amazing. So now let's meet, uh, let me show you Gemini. So as you notice that there is some lag, but it's okay. It does a good job. So now if I switch to Gemini and let's say here, so I was talking to Gemini about breast cancer. Uh, let's start a new one. So I, I prefer to use their Gemini 2.0 flash. It's still experimental, uh, but like, let's give it a try. So I'm just going to paste it here. Um, paste. Okay, I'm just going to scroll the beginning or even you don't need to scroll at the beginning. Okay, so the, the reason I just say in the beginning, like, please read this. It's just like, I don't want Gemini to summarize it and give me a long answer. So uh, please read this and wait for my response. So now it's reading it. So the nice thing also about Gemini when compared to GPT-4, the, the, the token size is bigger, like I explained in the video. And so now it's read it. So now I'm gonna go to the voice model. So it's not the microphone, it's not the camera, it's the one next to it. So I'm just gonna click on it. So I'm a physician, I'm trying to learn the material in this article. Uh, ask me one question at a time. Don't move on to the next concept unless I uh, answer your question right and I master the concept uh, in the question asked. So please go ahead. All right, so here's your first question. Can you explain the difference between systole and diastole? As you notice that there is no lag time, but I will just continue. Uh, I think uh, systole is the contraction of the heart and diastole is the relaxation of the heart. That's correct. Now, can you name the phases of the cardiac cycle that happen during systole? Uh, I'm not sure. What are the phases of the cardiac cycle? Can you remind me? 
All right, so the phases of the cardiac cycle are, first you've got atrial systole, that's when the atria contract and push blood into the ventricles. Next is ventricular systole, which is when the ventricles contract and pump blood out of the heart and into the arteries. Finally, there's diastole, which uh, is when all right. the heart relaxes so and fills with blood. I have another question. Um, so as you all notice, right, when ahead. I talk, okay, so I'm just gonna hold it. So as you notice, like when I talk, I can interrupt a true conversation. And this is something you can't do with GPT or ChatGPT right now because the advanced voice model won't be activated uh, if you add data to the chat. But here in the Gemini, you can do that. So it really depends on what you have and what you prefer. I think both are do a good job uh, in explaining concepts and there would be, they would be great tutors. Uh, there are some more restrictions on Gemini when compared to ChatGPT. Um, I did not notice this today. Of course, it, this is a very short experiment. But that being said, when I try to read an article about on oncology or cancer, or I try to l understand it in my own words, it's it's the questions created uh, were not that specific in my opinion, but things might change. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know. Uh, you can leave comments or questions below and I will answer them. And if you have any other ideas on how to use AI to improve learning, I'm more than happy to read your comments. I will see you in the next one.